Hi guys, welcome to Margarita Says. Um, I'm going to do a video about uh, Lawrence's Krauss book, Universe from Nothing. Um, it started as a video, he made a video, I think it was in 2009, with Richard Dawkins about the universe and that, you know, that it started from nothing. And um, it, the video got like millions of views and he wrote a book afterwards. I've watched the video, I've read the book, and um, I find I find science um, very mysterious and very interesting and much more interesting than the Bible. Um, and um, I actually started reading the Old Testament and how the universe started, you know, and how God created the universe in seven days and how, um, I'm sorry, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not, and I don't have any books for me, but I'm just going to speak my mind and try to connect the thoughts and how uh, God wanted Isa to be the king and uh, no I'm sorry Jacob to be the king and he told Jacob to put the uh, clothes of Isa and it doesn't make sense to me because this God is just created universe in seven days why does he have to lie to the father of uh, Jacob and Isa and why can he just tell the truth and um, so I find science the way the universe started from science from a big bang and that Perhaps there had to be nothing for something to start. That's to me much more interesting and much more fairy tale like and much more amazing than reading in the Bible how the universe started. And but at the same time it's very sad because reading a book by Lawrence Krauss, The Universe from Nothing, he said if you put all the galaxies and all the planets together everything, all the matter, it's about 1% of the universe. The rest of the universe is dark. Um, there's 30% of dark matter, and then there's the, the rest, which is the, the most of the universe, is just dark energy. It's just So the most important stuff in the universe is the stuff that doesn't shine. And it's not stars and the galaxies. And, and you know, the whole fact that when you read the Bible and the, 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 the universe and the earth was created for us and how important we are and when you read the, the book the universe from nothing we're static we are noise we're insignificant when you turn on you know if you had like an old TV not cable but you know all that static when the, when there was no channel that's what we are and it's it makes me very very sad and I I don't think sometimes I read um, Sometimes I watch videos about like atheists and people say like, oh, you know, it's so liberating. But to me, it's very lonely and it's very, I don't know, I, I can't find comfort in that. It's its sad to me. It's like almost like tragic and I feel like pain. I feel um, the fact that 99% of the species that ever existed on the planet Earth are extinct. To me, that's very sad. The fact that I'm going to be extinct the fact that the people that I love are going to die someday. That's, I can't find peace with that thought. And no matter how I try to, to, you know, to, to find like a, an answer and say, well, that's because of this. And I can't, you know, and it's, and I think that's what the difference between maybe me and like other atheists and people that say like, oh, you know, it's so liberating and it's great. It's not great because um, when uh, my loved ones are sick, I I start praying, but at the same time I'm like, what if nobody's listening and like I'm nothing, like I don't mean anything. And it's um, I really I really wish there was someone that I can that would hold me no matter what and love me unconditionally and and I, I guess. I guess I need that. I want that. And um, I'm one of those people. I'm not as brave as Christopher Hitchens. You know, he he was a very brave person. I think the way he stared death into the face, I, I'm not as brave as him. He was, a, you know, he was somebody that I admire. I think he was a, he's a very rare human being. But anyway, so in the book of Universe from Nothing, so pretty much 99% of the universe is dark. It's not galaxies. It's not planets. So it doesn't make sense if if God created universe for us why would he put 
why would he make it that 99% point something that it's not up for us? I mean, I think it was created more for something dark, you know, for the dark, for nothing. I don't know. Um, and um, also the way life originated that uh, we are made of stardust, literally, and that the supernovas, which are uh, a very, very big stars, uh, they had to explode um, in order to, for life to start because all the, all the uh, material, all the molecules that are in the supernovas, they're in life. So if the stars did not explode, you and I would not exist. And that's, that's very poetic. At the same time, it's maybe, maybe the supernovas are Jesus and that's, they died for us so we can, we can live. Um, I also, um, when I was reading the Bible, the New Testament, um, how God created animals and it was just beautiful and he's like, and God created two of every creature. And that's to me also, because I don't think the nature is beautiful. I mean, it is beautiful, it's mysterious, but it's not beautiful in the sense like a fairy tale, like where it's like everything is peaceful. I mean, animals eat each other and it's the survival of the fittest. And I think nature is very, very cruel. It doesn't care about um, altruism. I know there's some, some, you know, like um, in Richard Dawkins' book, there's some things about altruism and how it's in nature and how it's beneficial and it's an evolutionary trait, but most of it is not. It's Most of it is selfish. And that to me is very sad too. And, um, because I want the universe and I want everything to be very loving and very altruistic and loving and peaceful and and I want people to love each other very much and help each other but uh, <clears throat> and uh, I mean most of my life I do I feel lonely and um, I have friends but I do I do feel lonely a lot of times um, and I think also what scares me is that our universe is expanding and um, the scientists are saying that it's, it's, it's flat, our universe is flat, three-dimensionally flat, and it will be expanding forever. And what it means is that uh, eventually, um, what Lawrence Krauss is saying, it's going to be expanding faster than the speed of light. And when that happens, if there are still creatures living on our planet, intelligent creatures, uh, you know, continuation on, on planet Earth or, or, or somewhere else or on Mars or they won't be seeing the true universe because it would be expanding so fast that faster than the speed of light and in order for us to see it has to be the light has to reach us and the light won't be able will, won't be able to reach us and therefore people that will be living at that time no matter how smart they are they will have a false uh, version of the universe because the universe is expanding faster than the speed of light and um, basically there's no good end to our universe I mean it's gonna be expanding and uh, maybe whoever survives is gonna be dominant but very lonely because there's no way for them to contact other and I know I have a human perspective, and um, when I made a video about Michika Ku, people said, well, you, you think I'm like a human. Yeah, I do. And I guess that doesn't make it less valid. And I think we all want love and understanding, and I think we all want our lives to matter. We want to do something special, and we want, we want to change the world, I think. We want to, we want to matter. We want to leave a footprint, I guess, but, but a good footprint.